to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday so we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of open source Linux and basically just anything that we find interesting. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week. Well, back again this week is one Jill Bryant. Yeah. Schrodinger's Jill has been disproven. Yes, right. And that, <laughs> yes. that sound is Pedro Mateus and everyone watching us live on Twitch. Hey. Getting a little bit of a late start, playing around with some audio stuff. So uh, there's your fair warning. I always go back and try to tune things up a little bit if I have to. There might be some clicks and some pops in this one. So Here are big ramblings. Yes. <laughs> Definitely going to yeah. be dealing with that. Um, hey, what's going on with everyone, though? Uh, I, I know strangely, probably for the first time in a decade, I found myself uh, this week grinding track mania, trying to get medals. <laughs> I, I, I was adulting really hard. I was proud of myself. Like, look at the old man. He's getting gold medals again, which is not terribly <laughs> impressive. But if you keep – I don't – I have never no, – Followed Trackmania news in a long time. It's an arcade racing game. It's been around since like 2006. <laughs> but a lot of the world records were invalidated. Like, oh, I can do it. And it's like doing the Rocky thing. It's come out of retirement. See if you can still. I'm like, oh man, no, I can't. But I think me and uh, Pedro will have Elder's Day Friday. And yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. Mid to late 30s. <laughs> <laughs> Trackmania. Yeah. So. Uh, stay tuned for that on Friday. What's new with you, Jill? Oh, well, as everyone knows, I was out last week. I got my second shot and I was hit pretty hard. But believe it or not, it was worse for me the first shot, which is kind of unusual. It's usually the other way around. But it still was, you know, I was still out for a good, like, almost week. I'm, I'm still having fevers, even last night. <laughs> so, but, but um, I'm just happy to be able to you know, soon go to Disneyland and go to Linux convention soon and socialize with my friends. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> and I'm so happy I got my shots and that's taken care of. And I also wanted to thank, uh, wish distrowatch.com a happy 20th birthday. Yay. It's a, a right website on. we all use and love. <laughs> and it was, you know, how we first discovered a lot of our, our distros when we were doing distro hopping back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> we're starting Linux with Linux. <laughs> Indeed. So we're going to have to jump right into this, uh, kind of getting back on track with something that we started with last week. And there, there was yeah. an issue with somebody getting in trouble for downloading um, Ubuntu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone uh, on yeah. Reddit, uh, Nate Nate 60 uh, got a very threatening email from uh, Xfinity as I speak to say, oh, you downloaded Ubuntu. You're a filthy pirate. How dare you? And <laughs> there was a certain uh, group behind uh, that particular claim, OPSEC. And uh, of course, Torin Freak went to OPSEC's like, yo, what are you guys doing? And they said, well, the DMCA notice was spoofed. Uh, Someone uh, clearly, and this is, uh, how did I put it? Uh, it's easily disproven uh, that this was not sent by us, and it is in fact a spoofed attempt for these particular the MCA notices. Okay, so if it's that clear, can why haven't you actually, you know, uh, disproven that? Show us the meat. No. I, I want to see the beef. Trade secrets. Mm. I know, can, I know. Legal proceedings. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> but no, I kind of want to see that evidence just because I want to call shenanigans. No, no, no. You, you think you do, but it's for the best that you don't. And you just need to buy this line that we're trying to sell you. Okay. Yeah, no, that was a flimsy excuse if I ever saw one. <laughs> I have never understood the um, logic behind just coming out and going, okay, our bad. Oops. As opposed to, hey, let's... Yeah, no, it was a mistake. Mm. I'm sorry. We're human. It happens. It's like, mm. yeah, okay. Mm. Mistake. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, I was actually just so happy that, that Canonical is launching its own investigation into this into this issue. You know, that's, oh my gosh, that's uh, definitely needed, even though they technically really didn't have to do that, you know, but that's, you know, good on them for... Uh, you know, letting, uh, they letting the world know to, that this is free software. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> someone's trying to claim uh, copyright on their IP? 
Well, that, you know, that's GPL true. as it yes, may be. That's true. Uh, but someone is trying to claim their th- stuff. Yeah, they kind of have to. You got to do your own thing, man. I yeah, like with that. I guess so. Because <laughs> we've had that company <laughs> twice try to claim Jackbox, Party Pack, six or seven music from VODs from uh, a year yeah. ago. The first time I'm like, okay, they're bad. Get a, then they did it again. And I had to get in touch with Jackbox and Jackbox. Um, the legally person came back and like, yo, uh-uh. Go ahead and just tell them to go die in a fire, which I did. And they got the message because mm. uh, I understand why Ubuntu has to do that. But hey, yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. talk about some, <laughs> something that I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to get too excited about. <laughs> Yay. Rumors and speculation. <laughs> We're talking about the ZHPG DG2 Intel work on that, man. Um, there's P- PCB leaks out, and we're talking like 496 cores, 16 gigs of VRAM, close to an NVIDIA 3080. Yes, discrete GPUs from Intel. We all want to believe, but it was Igor's lab. Um, they showed it. No, it was Moore's Law is dead. There's the back of the PCB. These are going to be big junguses. And I want to bring this on because I, I definitely want to say that, you know, one you can, I, I have a lot of negative things to say about Intel, but one thing, their graphics mm-hmm. stack, truly open source. You can't say that about a lot of companies, man. Can't say mm-hmm. that about literally yeah. any other company unless you're using Nouveau. <laughs> Fair point. Now, I was reading through this because, hey, we would always like, we want these options and Intel, you know, just reading through the slides and stuff that they put up. They say, hey, we're confident we can crush other media encoders with the ZDG2. This is where you got my attention. Because this card's like, oh, hey, no, we'll find what? You're going to actually make a media encoder? You're going to put some silicon yeah, a proper on the card? GPU to accelerate uh, QuickSync? Yeah. <laughs> and make it good. And so Intel has competition in something. And if they mean by crush that they're going to be able to do a better job, or at least on parity with Turing and VNCode with X264, you do have my attention because, you know, that's what I'm looking for in a video card, not necessarily for gaming. I'm looking for lots of memory, good hardware encoding for streaming because the de facto, the default is in VNC and um, comparative. This is still like the dodgy thing compared to OpenCL performance because it's not going to have CUDA. But it's going to be able to leverage OpenCL. I don't want to see what that, you know, that's going to look like in Blender. Oops, sorry, can't do that. I want to see what that's going to look like in DaVinci Resolve. That, mm. hmm, I get an interest in that. Also, after seeing some of the upcoming prices, did everyone watch NVIDIA's? Uh, we're going to have the 3070 Ti, 3080 Ti. Oh, do you get to spare 1200 bucks laying around? LOL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are rumored to come in, you know, the high end at $500. And yes, I understand this is a weird backwards society we're in where we're clamoring for a $500 video card. Like, oh, what a deal. <laughs> Pedro, I'm saying it is a weird jacked up society when people think that. Yes. And that's where we're I at. I refuse. Yeah. I refuse to let my brain slide into, oh, hey, $500, uh, $500 or currency units for a GPU in 2021. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. No, I'm sorry, but no, that's not. No. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it is. <laughs> not at all. What I'm saying when you look at it, like, wait, in it. If it's available, like lower end 399, something like that. But if you can get 3080 performance for 500, Intel would not be able to print these things fast enough. Oh, they they won't be able to yeah, regardless definitely. of whether or not that promise holds up. <laughs> it, it's yeah. just going to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was cool that the target uh, TDP is expected to be less than 235 watts. Wow. Now they were looking between, you know, like 225, 250 watt. So that would be very impressive. And um, uh, the clocks will be up to 2.2 gigahertz, but not sure. We're not sure if that's the average or boost clocks or not. And um, they are expected by the end of the year or or Q1 of 2022, which means you might be able to get <laughs> buy one of these before you can get your hands on an RTX 30 series <laughs> or or AMD's RX 6800 XT. <laughs> so that is a possibility. Yeah, no, those are unicorns. <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, those are unicorns. But it's also got a really sweet price for their mid-range cards, two hundred to three hundred dollars. That's um, pretty good. The uh, <laughs> pricing links hold up, which you know that would be very much yeah. on brand uh, with <laughs> Intel because whenever something leaks, it it tends to be the case. Uh, but I think yeah, it is see something interesting from the um, GPU department because I, I think they're willing to come in because they well let's face it they have to come in low to get into the market they got to get that traction this yeah. first generation is going to be i think incredible value deals yes they yeah. have to but because mm-hmm. if they come in pricing yeah, like they used to price their cpus mm-hmm. yeah no one's gonna buy that <laughs> i for one look forward to our new zwi GPUs, and then you just confuse everybody <laughs> because you can have your Intel GPU or your AMD Z-wee. motherboard. Yeah, Zwees. That's what I've been calling them. <laughs> Zweewees. Jill, <laughs> they changed a thing on Firefox, and <laughs> the internet is incredibly happy about it. And I was like, "Hey, man, I can't get enough of it." When you change the visual appearance of an application, everyone's excited and immediately embraces it. Oh, yeah. So as Ben was saying, um, this pertains to Firefox. So Firefox 89 web browser has been released with a brand new look. And Mozilla wanted to reduce visual complexity. Oh, God, it looks different. I hate it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So it has new colors, new tabs, new icons, new menus, new dialogues, and a new application menu. But the one... A uh, change feature that a lot of people don't care for is the floating tab, the new floating tabs feature, and uh, you know that was uh, that was previewed in the Firefox Proton released last February. So this allows you to um, the ability to move around and detach tabs really easily, but they're kind of big and chunky looking. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. What do you no, guys think? I, I, did, I did some maths based on the screenshots uh, on the OMG Ubuntu um, article, and those are over a hundred pixels tall. Those those tabs. It's like maybe maybe that's a byproduct of them being you know the, they're using GNOME in the screenshot, and GNOME is known for the atrocious and stupidly big uh, title bars, which are completely pointless. But what do I know? Uh, the uh, so maybe that's a byproduct of that, and in other uh, more sensible desktop environments, uh, they'll be you know, like current Firefox does, which is like thirty, a height of thirty pixels is plenty. If you get a problem with the tabs, Firefox, just close your eyes, man. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just don't want you know, to have a bunch of dead space at the top of the screen, because let's, we live in the era of 69 and vertical real estate is already at a premium. If we were all using four by three or five by four screens. (laughs) Okay, sure. But (laughs) vertical real estate, it comes at a premium. (laughs) Don't waste it. Well, I wouldn't play with it. I downloaded it every now and then. Uh, I can report it works on Debian Bullseye-ish, you know, when it officially is released and Debian didn't. Didn't have a problem with it. Launched out of the box. Now, if you want to get rid of the Proton amazement, you can just set browser Proton enabled defaults. It's easy enough. So, so you, you can be upset for 20, 23 seconds until you do that. Then you're like, ah, oh, you can do an anger cleanse and probably need to get out and find some actual adversity in your life because really, uh, it, the rest of the UI actually looks pretty good. It's just the tabs. That's my yeah. graph. <laughs> I, I looked at it. I, I didn't cut it off. I looked and I'm like, it looks like a browser. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good because that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, it was definitely exciting to see, you know, Firefox effectively just like change the landscape of browsers like 15 years ago. But Recently, this recent trajectory is questionable. Mm, I, I, They've had some questionable mm. decisions recently, yes. Uh, I wish them the best. Yeah, and Every, unfortunately, uh, a lot of layoffs. Yeah. So, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it works. Go download it. It's free. It's a great alternative to the Chromium everything of everything. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 
Pwn passwords. Have you ever been brave enough to type in a password into websites? Like, give me a password. I'll tell you if it's, a, you know, it's like that wonderful utility that I use to check and see if my credit card numbers have been hacked. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, to be fair, I have used the um, have I been pwned password thing, mostly for the old password that I used to use back in my early, early days. And yes, that password has been pwned do you ever do in at least two different leaks. Curiosity, like <laughs> the ones that you have used yeah. in 15, 20 years. The ones that yeah. I know I don't use anymore for anything that I care about, yes. And yes, apparently two uh, <laughs> leaks have uh, my really, really old password. So there's that. The This story, though, it is about Troy Hunt, the creator of Have I Been Pwned? And he put out a bit of an article saying, Pwned passwords, open source in the .NET Foundation and working with the FBI. So, uh, Have I Been Pwned is now working with Microsoft and the FBI. Good times. It's for uh, your so, own good, yeah, citizen. <laughs> uh, part of the uh, <laughs> impetus here is very much the whole .NET, uh, the .NET Foundation, and they they they're separate from Microsoft in the sense that Microsoft allows them to be separate because they were funded by Microsoft and founded by Microsoft that announced at a Microsoft conference. So let's don't delude yourself to think that they're completely separate from Microsoft. But it is, yeah, the, they are very much uh, in on board with the whole let's open source everything that we can get that uh, public, um, get the public to see what is actually going on and create that level of accountability with everything that's going on. And then the FBI rolls in and goes, oh, we would like to contribute some passwords uh, that we found over the course of our investigations for a great deal many things. And as long as that particular agreement only works in the sense that the FBI sends passwords to have I been pwned and not the other way around. Yeah, that's that's okay. It's just the the opposite that makes me feel kind of iffy. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good point, Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in no means send passwords to the FBI. <laughs> but I think this is actually really good. Um, uh, the password collaboration with the F- FBI is, you know, really an incredible result of open sourcing. Have I been pwned? And is is one of the many reasons why we need more open source adoption in government. So that is the positive thing. You know, we've we've got adoption of this in the government. <laughs> the government level and yeah i fbi giving giving all the passwords no problem but the other way around no no yeah and he does specifically say we don't want clear text passwords this is all uh we want the sha and the um other thing for the pair um and yeah that's Fair enough. That's how all the passwords have been stored up to this point in the Have I Been Pwned database. So uh, might as well. And hey, TLM, that's the one. But now it's finally <laughs> open source, so we can start up a gimme them digits dot Linux Gamecast dot com. Yes, we yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> we have the technology. <laughs> that is brilliant. Uh Open source stuff is brilliant, including an open source source code spell checker. This sounds like a horrible idea i don't need i Aww. i will be the first person like my my spelling in english is nominal at best and <laughs> google docs has google, well just google in general has, has made it a, a corporate mission to destroy what little ability i had because now i've developed this amalgam of like shorthand in google docs where i know certain Characters will just yes, automatically pick up. The squigglies up. will right. uh, save me. Because <laughs> now it automatically corrects me. Like, oh, I only have to type in those three characters for those six? Okay, I'll do that up from now on. <laughs> but yeah, this one, uh, it's for your source code. And I'm a, I'm bad enough at programming uh, that I already dread when the compiler tells me, it's like, you done goofed? Uh, I certainly don't want something to tell me that my um spelling is also bad but hey here we are this is typos <laughs> and it does exactly that it basically does a natural language check on your source code and if it finds a word that 
is close enough to a dictionary word and is just slightly misspelled, like transferred with only the one R or announced with uh, only one N between the A and the O. That, yeah, you get red squigglies uh, below. It's like, yeah, you might want to change that. And no, I refuse. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm incompetent Aww. at programming. I don't need to know that I'm incompetent at spelling, too. <laughs> but Pedro, it's in Rust. You can just do cargo install. Yay. Uh, no, the, the, there's Yay. like 1.1% of bash there. <laughs> Sometimes what looks like a typo is intentional. <laughs> People's names, acronyms, localized content to market and oh, you can train it. Okay, that's neat. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm good. I, I know I'm fallible, so I'm not going <laughs> to. <No. laughs> yes, I know. I'm just a, a pudgy human. Can you not? <laughs> you gotta kick it up a little bit. You gotta get on Google, Google's level. It's like we know you don't know how to spell. We're just gonna. <laughs> You just walk in assuming that right. it's like, okay. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, this is, this is, it's so, it's so needed though. Cause you know, we do occasionally misspell and we rely on Google too no. much. <laughs> so. I don't want things pointing out I'm wrong. Well, right. more things. More things. <laughs> I think it's a neat project. You can go find it in our show notes. Um, if that's uh, some punishment that you would like to inflict on you or better yet, your friends. Hmm. No. Yep. Oh yeah. No, mess no, with people. No. Please. Uh, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's talk about this will mess vintage with people. word processing. Yeah. So this is word czar. It's a document mode word star word processor clone for the 21st century with a pretty cutey gooey interface to boot and all its uh, blue and, and gray uh, deliciousness. <laughs> and if you were like me back in the day, I lived the word star life in the 80s and was upset by the upstart word processor word perfect, or I used to call it word defect, but I still like word perfect. <laughs> But anyways, this this uh, clone is awesome. It has all the same key bindings and it works exactly the same. It's just a little prettier looking, <laughs> but it works beautiful. I had fun with this. It was uh, bringing back the memories. <laughs> this thing can die in all the fires. Um, you know, my, my first thought was, you know, when you think word store, I think the modern modern nerd would know uh you, you're probably thinking george r, r. martin and Anne rice two people that still famously yeah maintain their word star <laughs> machines like, exactly okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I grew up during the time where this was the word processor and i, I went and hammered on some of the old muscle memory a couple of things are missing um uh, mm -hmm. the um non-document edit in that's out um the ah, hk yes. the hide blocks k I don't know why that is there. Um, I think it's like WS4 and the GH0 is missing for the get rid of the help screen. I'm not saying that was just what came on. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. that could be misremembering it too. So there is that, but it has a GUI. I don't know. Mm. Like if this thing was real, it would just uh, like kill X and drop you to the console. <laughs> uh, yeah. Even without the GUI, the big well, one here is very much the UTF-8 support. Uh, Ven was showing the screenshot yeah. of uh, the Greek writing uh, there. <laughs> yeah, couldn't do that with the original word star. So very nice. Very, very nice. All right. I don't know. I just thought I'd yeah. get Yeah, and you can import, uh, uh, export docx, which is nice. <laughs> nice feature. Mm -hmm. But does it export <laughs> PDF? We used to call it. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. But you could export to a, a docx and then export to a PDF from the other program. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way to make one, though. Show them about the dark, it. bad old days. Oh, you could take a screenshot, then and make it a PDF. <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Something we've talked about on this <laughs> show a couple of times is um, what was going on with the GIMP project. Like, is the GIMP project named correctly? Is that a good name? Like, eh, would we get more adoption, better traction if we called it, I don't know, anything other than the GIMP? Possibly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a team, or at least one person with a team, eventually, that was like, hey, we are going to fork GIMP, and we're going to call it 
glimpse and uh you know we're just gonna rock on kind of a rebranding i'm gonna add some stuff to it uh well r.i.p glimpse uh the project is now on a hate it on on hiatus yes hiatus <laughs> <laughs> yes, the project is on hate us. Hate us. Um, yeah, this, comes, uh, this was posted on Sunday. It's like, we would like to thank everyone who supported the project for the last two years. The blog post lays out current status of the project. Bobby Moss has not returned to the project. Okay, that, I went digging around in the um, GitHub commits for this project. Just out of curiosity, because I don't track it. And I'm speaking purely from ignorance here, because I have not tracked this project. Other than just to give it a mention, I'm like, hey, this is a project. Go check it out. I, I didn't quite get all the way back to 2019, but I, I didn't see anything like in the commits and the repo. And it's like, was there much done outside of just rebranding? That I, I didn't. Send me some email, point out some stuff to me. I, no hate on it whatsoever. I just didn't see anything. Now, basically, what went down is the project came to a screeching halt um, a couple of months back when almost a year ago now. Bobby's employer said, you know, tap the brakes. We need to make sure this is okay with legal and all that. So stop working. And he's like, cool. I want to keep my job. Understandable. So I'm like 10 months roll by and he was in a position, you know, they got everything squared away with the work to kind of come back to this and start working on it again. And Bobby, which also completely understandable because I've been there after leaving a project for that long, come back in going, nah, <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. He's like, you know what? Quality of life versus, he's like, yeah, I, I don't want to tango with it. And, you know, sometimes it happens if you have like the one person driving the project, that person leaves everyone who's auxiliary to that project. They just kind of stand around. So he came in and was like, hey, we're going to shut down, you know, donations and stuff like that for now. And if it comes back, which, hey, I hope it does, uh, they'll be there to pick up everything and get it moving again. But yeah, for the current time, it, and it is no more. It is practically deceased. Yeah, no, it was, it was an interesting proposition, you know, let's make GIMP less, uh, workspace unfriendly because, oh yeah, just opened a GIMP. <laughs> eh? <laughs> and yeah, I can see that being an issue. If you work with some very, very uptight people, which I do, but yeah, the, um, the, the the proposition was very interesting. But at the end of the day, you were still forking a very well-established open source project for the sake of that friendlier name. Maybe introduce some stuff in the future. Did it really shake out like that? And uh, this is not the first time that we've seen a project that tried to do that. Basically not even get off the ground. It, it just kind of fizzled out. So... Yeah. Mm. It's a shame, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's it is really unfortunate because this is what can happen with an open source project when they encounter an issue like the pandemic or, you know, if it's work related logistics or they don't have enough developers. Your boss saying, Yeah, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I felt sorry for him because of that with his work. That that was kind of not cool. <laughs> that can definitely derail a project. I mean, we were talking about IBM a couple of weeks ago with, um, yeah, like, hey, you, you, everything you do, IBM owns. Like, not really. I mean, yes, really. But yeah. Don't say that publicly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's always sad to see. I mean, I had nothing against the project, and you can absolutely make the argument to me. Like, you know, if we called it something other than the GIMP, adoption might be better. I'm like, you got a point. Um, I'm not saying you're wrong. So maybe I don't think anyone's point. questioning that. Yeah. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just keep up. Either keep doing it and actually do it, or this will happen again. Yeah. All right. We got a little bit of pie to talk about, but it's a flaming pie. So good news on that front. Before we do that, I uh, want to thank everybody who is currently a patron right now. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You help us pay the bills, all of our hosting stuff, all the fun stuff, and entertaining things that we get up to each and every week. We try to kick some... Um, Bonus sodas your way and get access to our uncut episodes and podcast and video format. We do a pre pre super shows on every Saturday. If you're wondering about uh, behind the scenes, what goes on, there's like 10% of that. A lot of it's like <laughs> T 
TV and cultural movie reviews. Uh, it, it's a live yes. stream. Yeah. <laughs> Don't narc us out is what I'm saying. Uh, that goes down. You can listen to that live if you're Death Note or above. Name in the credits, you know, just a bunch of bonus stuff. I throw some early access stuff up. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, you guys want to take a look at this before it gets public? Or and then sometimes every now and then, like, oh, that's a dumb thing you did, Vin. Like, hey, maybe I'll fix that before we go out. So if that's interesting to you, uh, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. If not, hey, reshare the show or something like that. Give us a retoot because we got a mastodon mm-hmm. that I remember to use, Pedro. Yeah, we do. Uh, I don't. And- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I get a notification every now and then I on do. my email. It's like, oh, someone mentioned yeah. you. Okay, let's go see. Mm. Oh, it's Strider. Never mind. <laughs> also, uh, if you didn't catch it last yeah. week, we've moved our IRC to uh, LibreChat. IRC.LibreChat. Yes. Something and um, hashtag uh, Linux Gamecast. That's where it's at. That's the official one. Also, Discord. That's tied into our live chat. So if you want to play around with that and Twitch chat and all that, like and subscribe, da da da. Marketing stuff, we're horrible at that. So what's new? Um, yeah. Let's get into this. Oh, but we. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, we, we got have one person a thing. patron who. In- <gasps> yeah, Dirty Dean. In fact, speaking of Mastodon, he he posts beautiful pictures on, on Mastodon Jeep. of his travels and Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dirty Dean. <laughs> Sorry, that explains why I haven't gotten any uh, notifications recently. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Strider going on like on some yeah. rage deletion. I'm like, yes, I oh. the sun's coming up tomorrow, too. I mean, come on. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Dean! Thank you, thank you so much on that, man. Um, very much appreciated. Yes, thank you. <laughs> that is very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, now I'm going to go back <laughs> to this fire. There we go. <laughs> Sign pie. <laughs> yeah, pine stuff. <laughs> Yay! Because we get to talk yeah. about uh, Roomba <laughs> flamethrower. Yes, that's right. Raspberry Pi Zero W powered Roomba flamethrower, controlled by an Xbox One controller. Because why not, man? <laughs> Why not? I first see this, and the first thought: so R.I.P. Dalek stab. Um, uh, my Roomba that was unceremoniously uh, trampled to death because I forgot to tell the person who was over my house that it might pop out from under the couch, and it was just a regular ordinary <laughs> Roomba with a steak knife taped to the top of it that screamed exterminate, <laughs> and it startled them. It didn't survive. <laughs> But I like the tradition of making <laughs> Doombas. I really do. Um, and you know, it's good to see the kids taking up the time-honored tradition of murder Roombas. And yeah, I kind of like this because this is solar-powered. And it's a solar-powered butane weezer. Let's be honest. This is like less of a flamethrower than the uh, boring company's not a flamethrower. But it's still neat. It's almost yeah, a... Those are very cold flames. Yeah. You you could call it more of a Rube Goldberg mechanism for um, <laughs> delivering the fire so much, but it is kind of interesting with being solar powered and you can control it with the Xbox. So at bare minimum, you can annoy people in the house with it. And that kind of makes me a little bit happy, but back to, you know, just being a butane weezer. I mean, it does, it has a little bit of fire involved. I mean, 3d printed, <laughs> But what basically what I'm saying is uh, it's completely safe for ages five up. Okay. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, <laughs> allegedly. Yeah, See, I can throw that in there when no. your child comes down your house. But yeah, there yeah, it is. There's the but, can of beauty. Oh boy. Uh, this isn't the first uh, interesting Roomba project that I've seen. I think my favorite still to this point is uh, Michael Reeves' swearing Roomba. Whenever it bumps into something, it just lets yeah. out uh, pre-recorded swears. Mm. And uh, he got, uh, I think it was Lily Pichu to also do some really insane swearing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that that was hilarious. Uh, uh, if, you know, this is the family-friendly show, so by all means, don't watch it with your kids. Mm-hmm. On my recommendation, go watch it yourself. Then you can show it to your kids. All Up right. to you. Uh, but yeah, it is uh, Alfredo Cicada's... <laughs> Yeah, Alfredo Cicada's project here is, yeah, I like it. I like it very much, but yeah. I, it, 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 <laughs> it's likely to burn things down. So <laughs> this the is swearing is. Roomba is. <laughs> hey. Well, you can always put a, put a kitty cat on a Roomba. I mean, that doesn't require a Raspberry Pi. Why would you want to put a kitty cat? That's cat. wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, they just do it by themselves. They go, said, oh, it's warm. 
and they sit on it and then they get carried yes. around. <laughs> Kids with their fancy flamethrowers, just put a stick knife on it and it'll fix itself. So if you want to tell us about your homebrew Doomba, how can they do that? Oh, you can absolutely do that in a multitude of different ways. In fact, you could create your own and then mail it to us. No. Not giving you my address for no, that, Pedro, so uh, no, good that luck. Is, that is incorrect. You set it out on the front porch and you set it free. It'll find the way. It'll be like Old Yellow. <laughs> Just go to this place. Good luck. Yeah. Have fun, little I hope you find a charging station in right. 30 minutes. <laughs> But yeah, no, the best way to get in touch with us is to go to linkscapecast.com and hitting the contact button. That is where you'll find the uh, appropriately named contact form, and you will need to pick uh, LWDW on the topic drop-down box, and we will feature uh, your bit of feedback right here. Uh, just, uh, there's some text over the, um, the, the the contact form that tells you to... Yep. Careful with the links, as in Didn't don't put it. any. Not there. Not <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> so yeah, if you'd like to share a link for a project that you've done, uh, there's another line below that that tells you how you can do no. that. So do the read. Impossible. <laughs> I'm going to sit and fight with the spam golem <laughs> for 30 minutes, and then I'm going to message Vin and tell him that I didn't see the email address. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not naming names, all this. Wow. The, um, the the fun one is to watch the spammers. We use cleantalk.org as a service to, you know, just kind of check the spam. Mm. If you have a contact form, I highly suggest uh, they get a WordPress plugin, other integrations, and it's wicked cheap for the service you get. But I can pull up a report, and when you see a legitimate spammer, I'm like, first old school spam, right? Somebody physically doing it instead of a bot hitting it knowing that I've wasted a good 10, 12 minutes of their time because let's keep trying. <laughs> let's keep trying. <laughs> Aw. So uh, I'm guessing we talked about a little thing known as remote mm. server access. And this comes from Sten, which is frighteningly close to my brother's name. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just one letter off. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to tell you which one. Though. So yeah. <laughs> we were talking about remote server access and uh, Sten Ryan's. You asked how we remotely access servers. And I work as a systems engineer and uh, server admin for a company that runs servers all across the globe. So remote access is very much a requirement. Here are my methods. IMM, IMPI for remote power management and BIOS access. ESXi console for VM management, usually Ansible using SSH. Everybody loves their Ansible, man, uh, after they get it set up. Uh, SSH for VM access, Ansible again. Uh, a few services have VNC access, mostly the Windows servers. Shivers with stars, baby. And finally, some of our systems run their services with a web page for admin. So, yeah, this was about the Raspberry Pi KVM that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the, uh, I'm guessing that that came from the fact that, yeah, if you need to access the BIOS, if you need to access something while the server is booting, the having the Raspberry Pi already be running and being able to let you remote in and see what's happening with the BIOS is very, very useful. And to everything that's then described here, it is, yeah, that Raspberry Pi that we talked about that I can't remember what the thing was called, but it was a little KVM case that had an, an extra HDMI input did that it, it would um, then... Uh, did, did it shoot yeah. fire? It, it didn't shoot fire. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that Raspberry Pi project uh, very much lets you do everything that you just named. Okay. Literally, uh, I although I'm not entirely sure what IMPI is. Maybe he meant IPMI. IPMI. For the, Come on, like you yeah. haven't mistyped that. <laughs> I don't know yeah. because IMM. Yes, that's the Cisco thing that I know. But IMPI is like, what's that? Okay, the technical or the the, the Greek <laughs> word for it is the BIOS loggy anything. -y. Yes. <laughs> 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 It's the infrastructure power management interface. It's yeah. the thing you yeah. can log into, right? The yeah, that thing. It's like, I, I, I want to see the BIOS, show me. Um, all right, that's pretty sweet. 
uh, lights out management. Yeah, it's going to be lights out for us, everyone, until next week. But we're going <laughs> to. Nice to Cresney. <laughs> Go ahead and roll them credits. <laughs> yes. Yay. That was wonderful. Thanks again, Dirty Dean, for increasing your pledge. We really enjoy having you in the community. Dirty Dean's I a enjoy following now. him. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he used to be really active on Google Plus, so that's where I met him. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people um, they were not thrilled when Google Plus died. I know I wasn't. Uh, Google, oh, yeah. 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 we were something. all open sad. That's that. how we. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. But Google Plus still lives on yeah. as the uh, business service that no one uses. That no one uses. Yeah. Yeah. That that yeah. was a good decision, wasn't it? Google probably saved you some bandwidth. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I I honestly don't know. All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. Uh. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>